Hey guys, Shadi MD here. Hope you're doing well. Another cool video today. This one's featuring my newly acquired Gibson SG Special. So the reason I want to make this video is because I think this is one of the best value Gibson guitars you can get today. And of course, truthfully, the best value is always going to be a used guitar. So if you see one secondhand, I highly recommend you go for it. These are awesome guitars. But especially if you're in the market right now for a brand new Gibson guitar, I think you get a lot for the money with this. And this is one of the best bang for your buck Gibsons out right now. Anyways, before I move forward, I do want to mention I did a video of ACDC Shoot to Thrill with this and I highly recommend you check that out. I'll put a link at the very end and in the description below so you can check that. Anyways, let's get into why this is a great deal. So reason number one, this is a great value guitar. If you don't know already, Gibson recently increased prices on almost all their guitars pretty much across the entire lineup. They tacked on an extra $100, $200, even $300 to the original price. However, one of the few guitars that did not get a price increase was this one, specifically the Faded Pill and Blue finish you see here and the Sparkling Burgundy finish for the SG Special. The current SG Special, if you go on their website now, retails for $1,600 and it's in the new Cherry and Ebony finish. However, the Faded Pill and Blue that you see here and the Sparkling Burgundy finishes still sell for $1,500. Now, the catch to that is these two finishes are officially discontinued. If you go on the Gibson website, you won't see the Faded Pill and Blue or the Sparkling Burgundy SG Specials anymore. Likewise, up until very recently, you could order it from Sweetwater Guitar Center, but I'll put a screenshot here you'll see that uh, they're unavailable to order now as well from those sites. Now you're probably thinking, wait, they're discontinued. So what's the point of making this video? Well, I thought these were gone for good and I just kind of gave up on finding one. But about a month or two ago, when I was in my local shop, I saw this beauty hanging on the rack next to a sparkling burgundy one as well. I asked the guys, wait a minute, aren't these discontinued? They're like, yeah, but we had a few in the back. We just brought it out now. And I saw four member actually recently buy a Sparkling Burgundy SG Special as well. So I do think there's leftover stock of these still out in the wild. In fact, the Sparkling Burgundy one that was next to this was still hanging on the rack when I went to the store about a week or so ago. So these are still out there, but if you're in the market for one or looking to get one, I do recommend you grab one up sooner than later because pretty soon I think that leftover stock is also going to be gone. <laughs> contrast this guitar retails for fifteen hundred dollars let's look at some other gibsons in a similar price range or within a few hundred dollars of this guitar's price so the first one is the regular sg standard which retails for seventeen hundred dollars the other guitar is the sg raven which retails for eleven hundred dollars we also have the sg dark cherry which retails for sixteen hundred dollars the Les Paul Raven, which retails for $1,100. The Les Paul Studio, which retails for $1,600. And we also have the Les Paul Tribute, which retails for $1,300. Now, all these guitars I mentioned have a few things in common. They all use the PCB board wiring. None of them are hand wired. Another thing is most of them, except for the SG Standard and the Dark Cherry, all the others don't have any binding on the neck, so they're fully unbound. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is that the Raven series guitars, the Les Paul and SG Raven, don't have a full nitro finish. They have like a thinner satin finish, which wears out more easily. The other thing is that none of those guitars come with a hard shell case. I believe the SG Standard and Dark Cherry do come with like a gig bag, but none of them have like a proper hard shell case when you buy them. Now, none of those features I mentioned are inherently bad, and I still get crazy amounts of gas for those guitars. However, they are cost cutting measures and they allow those guitars to be sold at a lower cost. But what's interesting is for $1,500, you get a lot of those features in this. You get binding on the neck, which you can see here, nibs and all. You get a full proper nitro finish, not a satin finish. This is fully hand wired and I'll put a picture up right here. And this is the actual control cavity for my guitar. You can see it's hand wired. It's got the orange drop capacitors. 
And that's not to knock PCB board wiring. I've used it on guitars and they work perfectly fine. But if you're someone who likes to mod guitars or tinker, it's much easier on a hand-wired guitar to like change pickups and things. And also if a part feels like a pot, it's much easier to replace one pot on a hand-wired guitar than having to rip out the whole PCB board. One other thing I will mention about the wiring, I do believe the original models of these, like the 2019 models, are PCB board wired. They're not hand wired. If you go to Trogli's video and review of his, uh, which I believe was a 2019 model, you'll see there's PCB board wiring. However, the newer models are all hand wired like mine. I'm not sure which year they transitioned, but if you do find one, definitely ask to check the control cavity first. A couple other things about this guitar that I like, not the guitar itself, but this one does come with the hard shell case, which you see here. And I'll try to get a few close-up shots and we say I'll bring it over. All right, so here it is. This is the Gibson hard shell case that came with it. And what I really like is that this is actually one of the, let's see here, Canadian made TKL cases. So this is a made in Canada case, really good quality. And again, it was just nice to like get this with the guitar. Let me put this back. aren't really feature specific to this guitar only, but I think make this a really good value are the P90s. Now to me anyways, I think P90s are some of the most versatile pickups, being somewhere between single coils and humbuckers in terms of sound, they can cover a lot of ground. And these especially, I roll down the volume and I get these beautiful chimey cleans. I put it all the way on full and turn up some gain and it's just got this thick, like ballsy tone to it. And this guitar really covers a lot of ground in that regard. The middle position is especially nice. You can blend the controls and get just a whole range of sounds. So if you're gonna have one guitar and you need it to cover a lot of ground, I think this is good for that. This has a nice three-ply pick guard, which always just adds to a premium feel and look to the guitar. Another thing, and I'm completely speculating here, I could be totally wrong, but I do think being a discontinued finish, these are gonna hold their value a little bit better on the used market. As with anything, if it's a desirable finish or color and it's something that's limited and they don't make it anymore, the demand's gonna be a little bit higher. So I don't think you'll be able to sell this for more than retail, like some people are trying to revert, but I do think you'll get a little bit more money back if you ever move this versus say like a cherry or an ebony one. So all things considered with the binding, the nitro finish, being hand wired, the hard shell case, I think this is a little bit closer to the pricier SG standard 61 or even the Les Paul standard in terms of features than the earlier guitars I mentioned. And there are a few things that make this a little bit cheaper to make. Uh, you know, we have the dotted fretboard inlays instead of a full trapezoid. The headstock is a silk screen logo. It's not like a perloid inlay. There's no crown on the headstock. It's got like these cheaper, smaller white tuners you see on like the junior models, the single wrap tail bridge. But if you Google image or even look up a actual custom shop Gibson SG special or even the original vintage Gibson SG specials, a lot of these features were on the original SG specials and the custom shop. So I don't think any of these are cost cutting measures. I think they actually make this guitar a little bit more vintage accurate, which is a bonus. it so those are a couple of reasons why i think this is a great value gibson guitar i wanted to get the video up because i saw it was discontinued and not even available online to order but i think there's a few left in the store so i just wanted to get the info out there for anyone who is interested or looking to grab one up while it's still available 
And of course, if you enjoyed and liked, definitely subscribe and follow my channel. I got more fun videos planned and I really appreciate you guys watching. So as always, be well, rock on guys. Bye.